insecurities can weigh you down a lot more than you would expect. Whether it's revealing your feelings to a crush, or meeting new people in a place you've never been to before. So, you try your best to hide those insecurities. However, there are times where people can see through your facade, and they want to talk about how you're really doing. How do you respond? I know I have been a bit critical of late when it comes to the current direction Hell of a Boss is taking with their story overall. Though, for this episode, I feel it was overall pretty decent. But it's not really anything of note that makes it a memorable finale for this season. In a way, this feels like a glorified music video. Which makes sense because they got flipping Kesha to voice a character. There are some things I like about the episode that are of note for character development, especially when it comes to Luna. Which I am so happy to say, after the past couple of videos when I talked about her, people love to keep reminding me without realizing that I'm aware of the Luna situation but not finishing the fucking video! Sorry, sorry, content creator rant. <clears throat> While I do have some criticisms of the show, I am aware of the reasoning why the finale got delayed. But that shouldn't be used as the main source to debunk any criticisms when it comes to the storytelling. Much like with the recent episodes of Luna in Season 2, it's something to keep note of. But I think using it as a scapegoat is very disingenuous. For example, do you remember when we found out about the passing of the actress of Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher? And her last memorable scene was her flying back to a ship like Superman? Yeah, that definitely deserved to get called out along with the rest of that movie. I bring this example up to show that we shouldn't let behind the scenes obstacles dictate how we consume the episode. Now. With that little rant out of the way, let's go ahead and dive on in. Luna! Hey girl! Glad you could make it! Tex! Yeah, hey! Thanks for inviting me! Of course, of course! My heart is melting! A legitimate episode that truly focuses on Luna! Finally! Progress! I think the episode has done a fantastic job at showing Luna's antisocial tendencies from the very first shot we see her. From what we know of her, Vortex was the very first person she legitimately befriended outside of her job at IMP. Usually she tries to cut off any sort of social interaction with the people she doesn't see every day, and barely tolerates those who actually spend time with her at work. So this is the first time we see her on her own. Usually someone is always there to take a majority of the social load while Luna is mainly on her phone or seems distant from the conversation. Now, everything is on her to have some sort of social interaction at a place she's never been to before and only knows a couple of people out of a plethora of guests. One that we haven't met yet, but clearly has some sort of beef with our girl who made it her mission to remind Luna of the incident at the last party. Your aura is really aggressive right now. Oh yeah? Well maybe it's cause I'm in the presence of a massive bitch! I mean she's not wrong. Plus I have a bit of a nitpick with this particular writing. Reason being because bitch is being used as one of those terms. Kind of similar to a term that many black folks use as a symbol of taking back ownership. And another term that the LGBTQ plus use for the same reason. I'm not actually going to say them because I want that monetization, so... I know what you're thinking. Why do I have beef with how this scene went? Because this word was used throughout the episode and all the hellhounds were fine with it. So it's really jarring that everyone is gonna have a surprised Pikachu face when an actual hellhound says it to another hellhound. Especially when the term bitch is defined as a female dog. 
By the way, did you know that they use that term for female foxes and otters too? I didn't know that until now. I don't know if it's just my representation analogy coming into play here, probably is, or if the writers in this case were not realizing how significant this detail makes everyone in that party feel like they're reacting that way because the plot demands it. When you want to use a particular word as a slur, you have to treat that carefully. Otherwise, it makes a scene about that term very awkward and isolated compared to the rest of the show. Oh my god, it's Kesha! We have come full circle! Meh. Okay, don't get me wrong, I can understand how big of a deal this is since Viv's AMV on one of Kesha's hits, Die Young, is what got her on the map of animation in the first place. So seeing Kesha being cast in the finale like this can definitely be seen as a celebration to not only Vivzy, but also everyone who has been on this ride to her career day one. Not to mention the legal shenanigans that held this episode up for an entire year. I definitely believe that this is something to be excited for. But I'm not much of a Kesha fan. Now, technically, she didn't sing the song because, you know... At the same time though, I can't help but see it as needless filler. But I can understand it being here because it can be viewed as that celebration and victory lap for being able to finish the first season of a project that was an entire year in the making. Something that is unheard of in the indie animation scene. So while this isn't necessarily my cup of tea personally, I can definitely relate to aspiring for something similar for my goals as a content creator. Though, since we're on this topic, there is something particular that I want to talk about when it comes to Kesha's character, Queen Beelzebub, aka Queen Bee. Why does everybody want her fat? I could not believe that out of all the criticisms I saw on Twitter, the design of B is forefront because she isn't plus sized. Yes, the term gluttony is the excessive consumption of food. However, I can't believe I have to state that not everyone who is a bigger size has a gluttonous behavior. Everyone's body consumes food differently. And it's a lot more complicated than you think. Let's just call this critique as it is. A fat phobic opinion. Not to mention there are other ways that gluttony can play a role other than food. Which is why I think the definition should be updated to an excessive consumption of food, drinks, and or drugs. That definition makes a lot more sense with what Vivzy is trying to portray with B as a character. Considering that during the entirety of the musical number, plenty of the party members were consuming this candy that is making them high, drunk, or cross-faded. Gluttony is not always attached to obesity, and I'm so happy that Hellboss went down this route instead of lazily making her fat as hell because that's the best representation of gluttony. Which by the way, it isn't. Though, ugh, my god, I hope these animators fingers are okay because holy moly, B's design is a lot. Yeah B, this is Luna. Luna, this is my girlfriend B. Nice to meet ya bitch. Damn, he hitting that? I right, Tex, we see you. Get that sweet honeysuckle put. Oh, wait, yeah, my bad. This is a very solid interaction between the ladies. There are polar opposites of each other in the social spectrum. With B's outgoing and bubbly personality matching with Luna's aggressive and reserved one. It peaked as an example of how this dynamic usually goes. The extroverted individual is usually the one controlling the conversation, while the introvert is a lot more reserved and not saying or doing much outside of smiling and nodding. After that pretty awkward introduction, Luna clearly had enough. Remember, 
text was someone she had a legitimate crush on. While she definitely isn't the type to try to steal someone's man, knowing that Texas standards are catastrophically high since he's dating one of the seven ring rulers can be soul crushing to those who may find him attractive. So her self confidence is in the toilet, which meant that she's ready to dip from this whole situation as soon as possible. She didn't want to wear her feelings on her sleeve, so the best thing she could do is return home as soon as she can. Please. Okay, fine. Maybe one drink. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Considering that this episode happened right after the embarrassing night in Ozzy's, I'm sure Bliss would want to drink all of his sorrows away. Considering his current relationship issues with Stolas, a party is a great escape to try and grieve. In the worst way possible. You have to give a bit of fault to Luna as well in this situation. Well, yes, you can understand why Luna would want to go back in with having someone who can take the center of attention. Plus, the flirting from the random cute doggo made her flip the switch. She wants this party to work in her favor because I do believe she wants to expand her social circle and wants to increase her self-confidence. Plus, she is oblivious to the terrible way his date ended with Stolas. So knowing that Blitz would want to do everything for Luna, it made sense for her to want to use him as support to make the party experience a little easier. However, what she doesn't realize is that by putting Blitz in this situation is only going to do more harm than good, which is something that B realizes. Hey Loon, I don't mean to be a buzzkill here, but you're a uh, dad. He's seeming a bit out of control, like a mess. Honestly, this is such a refresher to see how Queen B has been handled so far in her debut episode. So far for every new character with a prominent role, they have all been some sort of enemy to the IMP team. So seeing someone who isn't a total jerk and is actually showing concern for the people she cares about is something I really think the show needed. A lot of people expected her to be another villain added to a very large group assigned to that label. So this was a nice little surprise to see her express that worry to Luna and urging her to talk to Blitz. Even showing that patience with Luna when she was being a bit rude to her. B starting to lash out was justifiable with Luna getting more personal with how she runs things. The only thing that prevented the two from scrapping was just the sight of Tex alone. Witnessing Tex's body language seeing that situation is what made Luna realize that she was making an ass out of herself, which brought back those insecurities. Though that self-reflection placed her back in the reality of the situation once she realized that B was correct. Blitz is a drunk, sad, horny little imp that is making all of the wrong decisions at this party. So Luna had to be the mature one in order to do the right thing and get him out of there. This does set how much insecurities can affect an individual in different ways. For Luna, it's wanting to hide behind other people's confidence and leech off of it in order to increase her own. While for Blitz, it's hiding his own insecurities by going completely overboard in the consumption of sex and alcohol. The combination of the two really places them both in a negative light, and they need to realize that. B at least tried to get Luna in the right direction of being more aware of those that are around her. And that should be something to note here as well when Luna starts to take care of Blitz in the end of this episode. So was it worth waiting for the episode to come out after what seems like a year? If you're a big Luna fan, I would say so. The episode was clearly about how one deals with insecurity and Luna and Blitz are the most insecure of the cast. 
Well, the first half of the episode is something I wouldn't call to be very memorable, as I do have an issue with the isolated bitch scene and the musical number overstayed its welcome. But I think the interaction of B and Luna, as well as witnessing Blitz being not okay in the second half, did lit this episode in my eyes. It told a nice cohesive story that opened up possibilities to see the relationship grow between all parties involved. Though this does put seeing stars in a worse light, I think. 